uh, Deputy General for Tarn McNeil. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Carol, and thank you for, for coming in this morning. Could I start uh, quickly? I've uh, just come from the Gender Equality Committee, Carol, so I've missed a little bit, and I apologise if I'm repeating anything, but on foot of that, could I just go to your annual report in relation to gender balance? Um, and I see at the end of 2020, the board has two female members, 22% and seven male members, with three positions vacant. Can I just ask for a progress update on that? So uh, we've had three, the Minister appointed uh, three new board members um, at the end of last year, two of which are women and one male. So our gender, uh, yeah, female four. gender is 33%. Okay, so still a way to go. Well, that's, to the it's for the department and the Minister to appoint. It is, but it's no harm to ha highlight it here either. Um, the, could I just ask you then about the green school travel and the act, active school travel projects that you've been engaged in? There's been uh, significant funding from the NTA for local authorities. Could you just give me an outline of that, please? And how you think that's going in terms of efficiency? Yeah, the, the green schools is, is, is a programme run by Antashka for, for us and for the department to, to encourage more sustainable travel patterns. Within that, though, there's a Safe Routes to School programme, which, which was rolled out, um, I think it was last year, it may even be the year before. Uh, and that's where we are trying to uh, do, f do further infrastructure works, mainly in front of school, to, to encourage sustainable travel uh, for pupils and parents alike. So uh, we, on Tashka, uh, uh, on our behalf, uh, sought submissions from, from all schools around the country as to who wished to be interested in it and, and were overwhelmed by the amount of interest in it. So mm. there's enormous interest in it. Uh, there's funding being provided by the Department of Transport to allow what, what, what needs to be done to be done. The challenge is that uh, uh, local authorities have to do a lot of the work outside the school gate uh, and they are, they are being resourced up gradually to be able to take on more of that. So a very good programme, lots happening, but a lot more to do, but it has been contingent upon local authority resources mainly. Uh, can I just understand, is that distinct from the active travel project then? It, they're, they're tied in together, yeah. so, so uh, they're, they're, they're really parallel programmes. So Safe Routes to School is focused on the school environment and the connections to the school. So active travel is obviously wider than that, but you yeah. can see they immediately cross over. So there's a connection between, uh, b b between the two in the environment of the school. So if we come up with the need to put in a cycle track uh, for a kilometre either side of that school entrance <coughs> to connect to, to some other cycle facility, clearly it's the local authority we need to do that. And while it's funded under safe routes to school, it's really part of active travel as well yeah, at the same is, time. Yeah, OK. Um, sorry, what's the funding amount that has been spent at this stage? Uh, I don't want to mislead you by giving you the wrong figure. Can we send that to you afterwards? Can you give me an approximate? Yeah, it's uh, maybe I could just help there. It's 1.465 million in, in 2020, and it's uh, similar uh, for 2021. 1.4 1. 1. million and similar for 2020 and 2021. Can I clarify? That's Green Schools, Philip. Is it? That's Green Schools program. Yeah. yeah. The active. Yeah. The active travel is in the 200 million. Well, the active travel this year there's, there's 289 million targeted spend on active travel for 2022. 289 targeted spent, and what's been spent then, say, in 2021? I think we, uh, it was in the region of 185 million. 185. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I think it's, you know, what we're trying to do, obviously, with the climate agenda, with, with making life easier for parents, making life easier for, for children is, um, it, so much is caught up in that, and certainly I've seen in my own area, huge, huge structural improvements, huge infrastructural improvements, and uh, more, more to come, and, you know, um, the relationship with the local authority in terms of, I'm not asking for, for problems, but just in terms of governance and efficiency, your oversight of that. Can you just describe that to me, please? Yes, yeah, so even though the projects are of a smaller... Oh, sorry, I'm not trying to frame it in terms of... I know, I know, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm really asking about governance. Yeah. So even in terms of, even though the projects are of a smaller scale than some of the, the larger projects that were mentioned earlier, we're still subject to the public spending code. Yeah. And therefore the same arrangements fall into place. So we act as an approving authority for all of those projects. Okay. And we have processes and procedures in place to give oversight to the projects, to try and make sure the design is right, uh, that the funding is properly uh, properly expended and we get the quality of project that we need to get at the end of it. So uh, it's it's a mini version of the larger projects with strong procedures in place to deliver them. Okay. And then a, a proportion of those are audited every year, so by our internal auditors in terms of the local authorities to ensure 
that uh, appropriate expenditure um, has been done on those projects okay. and proper procurement has taken place. There's huge effort going into this. I can, I can see that at every level and that's, and that's fantastic. Can I go back then to the broader read across of the other supporting public transport for schools? And again, I'll highlight the example of the 59 and the 111, 59, just by way of example, and this is where, you know, review of the routes and review of the timetables are necessary to support, you know, school children and their families. The 59 leaves Dawkey at 1543 and the school finishes at 1545. It gets to the next school at 1548 and that school finishes at 1545. The next bus from Dawkey is, is half four. It's a local example, but it just shows how, you know, those, all of those school children from two secondary schools are dependent uh, or should be dependent, as uh, particularly in the winter, and they're both girls' schools, uh, on being able to not wait around for public transport and access that easily. So could I urge, like my colleague, to urge a review of those types of things to Certainly. make sure that they're consistent with the people who actually, the, the needs of the people who need them. It's aligned with your other policy as well, so if I, if I could make that call. Um, I know you've spoken briefly about Dart Coastal Plus, and I don't, I don't wish to, to repeat that, um, Go ahead. Chair. Um, but could I just, um, uh, the, and I know my colleague has touched on Marion Gates as well, but um, for example, there's a new Dart station at, at Woodbrook, which is, which, is, which is great to see. The broader project, I mean, you said you were there in the last answer that you were at the early stages of planning. Can you give me a timeline for where this is going? It's a hugely populated area, part of Dublin. Um, what, what's your timeline if you're at the early stages now? Where are we overall? Thank you. So uh, later this year, there'll be a round of public consultation on proposals for the Dart Coastal South. Uh, and that will consider things like level crossing closures, which will be difficult, we know that, and then what would need to be done uh, south of Bray to increase the, the, the level of service to, to, to Greystones. Can I ask you, actually, because I think there's a lot of, there's an opportunity to explain the difficulties with that, because we have people frustrated that, you know, maybe the dart isn't more regular, um, and obviously the level crossing thing is, is a big part of that. Do you want to take an opportunity to explain, the, you know, the reasons for that, or, or you know, what's, what's driving that? Well, currently the DART operates every 10 minute frequency, you know, so that would be considered quite a frequent service. And obviously with DART Plus, uh, we obviously want to increase that frequency. And that's one of the reasons why the fleet mm. uh, is being purchased now to be able to both improve the, um, the service uh, frequency along those lines and, and give better um, and build the capacity on the on the service. But I know, I think we would like it more regular than every 10 minutes, particularly at rush hour. So 10 minutes is OK. But 10 minutes is, is very significant frequency on a, on a rail service. Well, you get on at Clinic Area at 10 past 8 and tell me how you got on. You know, um, um, I think we'd like it more regular than that, so I'm asking about the practical problems that impede that, because I think people would like to know. Well, level crossings are a real constraint on the rail system. Okay. Uh, first of all, they're, they're, they're an area where there's a safety issue that, that uh, uh, I, I won't go into, you can imagine what it is. And it's also an area where you get uh, uh, accidents occurring where people strike the barriers or strike something else and the rail system has to be effectively shut down while that's investigated. Two minutes left, deputy. Investigated and sorted out. So the, the biggest constraint to increasing the services is to do things like removing the level crossing, potentially upgrading some of the signalling works, which will be considered as part of this, and then you're into additional fleet. And the last thing would be to make sure that at the terminal points, mm -hmm. you have sufficient turnaround areas and platforms and all of that to accommodate additional services. So you're talking about additional turning points in your briefing material here. Like, where do you envisage that being? Is that... Dunleary Station is a place where we envisage uh, some, some additional turnbacks uh, arranged to be put in place. Uh, I'm not sure about Bray, maybe there's, a, there's some more to go in Bray, but definitely Dunleary. So if you could do that in Dunleary, you could have a service going, say, from Bray Greystones in or further, and also Dunleary, and you could increase the frequency in that more heavily populated area that way? You could, you could increase, you could have more concentrated services in a shorter section once you had a turn back facility uh, in the likes of Dunleary. You could start your service, more services there. And uh, do you have an estimate frequently. for the sort of cost that might be involved in that kind of thing? Just I think sense. we'd only be speculating at this sure. stage. So okay, no. it's commercially sensitive anyway. No, it's not, well, it's just we don't have it just, at that level, so it's not. Um, so it just wouldn't be a position to give a clear answer now. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to, to add in relation to Dark Coastal Plus? Well, just that it's an important. From our point of view, it's an important project uh, at several levels, but particularly the southern end of it. So the southern end, uh, increasing the frequency between. Bray and, Gray, Gray, Bray and Greystones is really a fundamental part of it for us. That's currently served with a half-hour dart service. We really want to be, that to be served by 20-minute mm. dart service, which is much more useful to people. So um, it's, um, it's, just, it's a challenging project. There'll be issues down there to deal with, but for us, it's a really important part of the Dark Plus programme. 
Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Could I ask that maybe that you come back to the two deputies just on that issue of joining up the, uh, the dots in terms of the, the time with school transport? I think there's an issue there. There is, Chair, and it's an unusual place to raise it, but you know, constituents have been in correspondence for some time, and it is a very practical problem for no. two secondary school, yeah. you know, two, two girls' Carly, secondary Carly. schools. Yeah. So far, you haven't got, got any resolution to it. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, can I just get progress on that? 